Hey Bosch fans, it's Caroline again and welcome to another video here at Wild Wind Lacquer. In today's video, I have another cluster of hauls for you guys. This is a number of group customs as well as mini orders that I placed from different brands. Also the Stardust Polish Box down here, the Fandom Flakies for June, as well as a group custom from Beezney's Lacquer for the UP Rainbows and Unicorn P group custom. There was also a custom polish that was made for Latania through Cloris to Carol for her birthday, which was, I believe, a couple of months ago. And I got a couple polishes from Dana Viana. This one is a thermal that I was super excited about that I also got because Latani was wearing it. Plus, this was a gift with purchase. So we have a lot to look at. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first one is that group custom from the UP Polish group called Fox Glove. This is from Bees Knees Lacquer. They actually created two custom polishes, but I limited myself to just the one. And I, of course, picked the purple one. So this is a beautiful, deep, but still juicy tone of purple, as you can see. It has reflective glitter in here as well as that UP pigment. Now, I don't remember if this was OG UP or if it was a UP sibling. It's very possible it was OG UP, but it is beautiful. So you've got that main red glow across the face. It does shift to green and gold at the edges. I think you can see that sort of golden color there. I'm not sure if the green is gonna show up on camera, but where you're seeing the gold, there is that green shift as well. And then of course you have those beautiful reflective glitters and there's hollow flaky. So this is really a beautiful party in a bottle. So here is Foxglove in three coats. I did need three to get what I would call mostly opaque. It still does have that squishy formula, which is from what I've heard pretty necessary in a UP polish, otherwise you could easily drown out the delicate shimmers. But there it is in three coats, and as you can see, it is mainly opaque. I think on short nails you wouldn't really notice any extra squishiness or visible nail line, but of course if you have a very prominent nail line, you could put this over either a blurring base coat or just a deep purple color in a cream formula to give yourself that boost in opacity. But this one is absolutely gorgeous. Kind of wishing now that I had gotten both of them, but I can't get everything. So there is Fox Glove in three coats with a glossy top coat. So that first one was Bees Knees Lacquer's Fox Glove. Now we're moving into the two that I got from Cloris to Carol. The first one was an add-on to the main reason I went to the website. This first one is from their 10th anniversary called 10 and it is a magnetic. So this one is a beautiful larger particled multi-chrome. You're seeing mainly a blue across the face, sort of in a deep aqua, but there are beautiful shifts. There are a lot of them. I want to say that this is possibly one that has a black to red multi-chrome as well as other multi-chrome shifts in here because I am seeing everything from black to red to purple to blue to gold and orange. Look at the rainbow in here. It is absolutely gorgeous. So let's go ahead and see it magnetized. So when you do magnetize it, you end up with, at least on camera, virtually a black polish. Now in person, I am definitely seeing red. So I am sticking by the possibility that this has a red to black multi-chrome particle in it in some way, shape or form, maybe as the base. And then a rainbow of that teal to aqua to purple in that multi-chrome magnetic pull. So here is 10 in two coats. This one I only needed two to reach what I would call mostly opaque. Again, it does have a slightly squishy formula, so on longer nails it's possible that you might need a third coat, but this one is really beautiful. It's got that vampy look on the nail. Again, I still think that is a red to black multi-chrome in the base because, again, on camera you're mainly seeing that as a black, but in person I can see some red particles in there, plus of course the dancing Aurora Borealis that you have on the nail from that magnetic line. Just a beautiful vampy one. I think this could look really interesting matte. I might have to try that. But there it is in two coats with a glossy top coat. So that first one from Colores to Carol was a 10. The next one is the entire reason I went to the website in the first place. If you're like me, when you're buying a single polish from a website, you often like to add a friend to the cart so that the polish doesn't ship alone and you sort of even out the cost that each polish ends up being because instead of adding on shipping to just one polish, you have it spread out and divided among at least two. At least that's how it makes sense. <laughs> 
in any case, this is the one that was custom made for Latanya's birthday. This one is called Bougie Babe and it is also a magnetic. So this one was one that I absolutely had to get. It was one that she was very impressed by and very touched by, so I had to get this. Let's go ahead and see it magnetized. So this one has, again, sort of a deeper base, but it has maybe more of a purple tone to it. You again have a blue flash that I'm seeing as purple in that magnetic pole. This one also has flakies in a couple of different sizes. So you're seeing those larger ones there sort of in a scattered effect. And then the larger particle sized shimmer or micro flaky adding another shift in here. I mean, look at all the colors you're seeing. Wow. Like I said, this one was a must have. This is such a dazzling color. You're seeing purples, blues, reds, oranges, golds, aquas. I mean, this is absolutely jaw dropping. Whew. So here is Bougie Babe in two coats. There you can see that beautiful glistening look that you're getting from all of the different sized flakies, plus that beautiful Aurora Borealis look that you're getting from that magnetic pigment. And there you can see it next to 10. I wanna say the magnetic particles used were probably very similar, if not the same shifts. But as you can see, based on the base that they're in, it ends up looking very different on the nail. You obviously have much more of a purple gleam in Bougie Babe. And like I keep mentioning, more of a dark blackened base in 10. But yeah, both are just gorgeous. And again, that is two coats with a glossy top coat. So that last one from Colorist to Carol was a Bougie Babe. Next up is my little order from by Danny Viana. This is the one that came with a gift with purchase. This is another instance <laughs> where I knew there was a gift with purchase. I knew I wanted to get this one here, which is our second polish. And this is the one that I ended up adding on to account for the distribution of the shipping costs for a single polish. This first one is Silencio Bruno, and this is a flaky topper. So this one I did end up swatching in three coats just so you could see all of the different components in here. This one is a really beautiful mix of iridescent flakies. Look at that huge one. So you've got iridescent flakies and you've got those multi flakies so you have a load of different kinds of shifts you're going to see the iridescent flakies i think in a couple of different kinds because you're seeing some warm tones but i also see cooler tones like blue on camera plus you've got the purple in that multi-chrome flaky that shifts to fuchsia so this was very unique among the flaky toppers that i already have in my collection so i thought it would be a perfect addition I like also that you're getting a couple of different sizes, so you're seeing those smaller crushed flakies there, but you do get some bigger ones here throughout the polish. So here's that one in three coats with a glossy top coat. And as you can see, it's pretty packed in there, but as I mentioned, it is three coats, so when you layer this over any other polish in just a single coat, you're still gonna be able to see the polish underneath it quite nicely. You're not really gonna be blocking it out by any pigmentation or anything. So very excited to be able to play around with this over other colors. I wanna say probably about a year ago, I was looking for something like this to add on top of a color that I was trying to basically create a dragon's breath opal with on my nails and I didn't really have anything like this so I'm gonna have to figure out what polish it was that I had used and see if I can't recreate or create in the first place what I had hoped to create back when I was wearing that polish but in any case there is Silencio Bruno in three coats with a glossy top coat so that one was by Danny Viana's Silencio Bruno Next up is the reason I went to the website. I had seen this on Latanya's nails in a few of her videos, or at least one of her videos, and it was gorgeous. It is a thermal, and you've got this beautiful shimmer in it. So I wanna say my bottle is a little bit warm right now, so you're mainly seeing that blue with maybe a pinch of purple in it, but in its cold state, it is a purple polish. Then of course you have that beautiful green shimmer in it. Now, my bottle does seem to have a couple random flakies in there, which I don't think is part of the polish, but this is a beautiful, beautiful thermal. Love the larger particle size of the shimmer as well. And I didn't even mention the name. This one is Can't Crush a Soul Here, which I believe was part of her Disney Soul collection, which is a movie that I really enjoyed. And yeah, this one I thought was just gorgeous. Here it is in just two coats. I was really impressed by how opaque it was in just two coats. If you have a really visible nail line, you might be able to see it through this but I thought it was really nice in these two coats this is also with a glossy top coat and so as you can see in its cold state it is more of a purple tone there is that sort of a 
blue lean to it though and then let's see if it's dry enough for me to nope so here it is i quickly ran it under some cold water to make sure it was at its full cold state so beautiful purple there and here it is ran under some hot water to turn it into its warm state there you can see it around the edges the more purple is the cold state the color that it's in in the middle is the warm state so maybe a little bit more subtle than some other thermals, but beautiful on the nail. Like I mentioned, when I saw it on Latania's nails, it was gorgeous. Had to find out what polish it was. And as you can see on the nail, you really do see that green glow very, very nicely. This is one I'm gonna have to probably get on my nails sooner rather than later. So that one was Can't Crush a Soul here. Now on to the gift with purchase. So she was running a special on her website. Any order would get a gift with purchase and this is what I got. Now I don't know if everybody got the same polish or not, but this is what I got and it is Brindle. So this one is a very interesting bright green. It's actually much brighter than it's showing up on camera. On camera it's looking kind of like a grass green, but once it's swatched it's very much like a neon yellow green and it is full of these orange holographic glitters in a few different sizes. So I will say when I unboxed this, I wasn't necessarily jazzed with it. It's not a color that I would have necessarily picked out on my own. Here it is in two coats with a glossy top coat. On the nail, it's definitely a yellow green and it is just jam packed full of that glitter once swatched. So this is one that I'm still sort of on the fence about. I'm not sure if this is going to be one that I keep. Like I mentioned, it's not one that I would have purchased or picked out for myself, but it is more interesting swatched than I felt like it was in the bottle. So maybe I'll have to pull it out closer to fall, which is when I would probably be wearing these orange glitters. We'll have to see, but that is it in just two coats with a glossy top coat. I will say I was really impressed with how opaque it ended up being for how sheer of a jelly it is. Now, don't get me wrong, it is still sheer, there you can see that light coming through but I was happy with it in the two coats I think longer nails would definitely still see visible nail line as you can see there but definitely ended up more opaque than I was expecting so that was by Danny Viana's Brindle now we're moving into my subscription boxes the first one is from the Stardust Shimmer collaboration and this is all the way back from May. So this first one is from Kathleen and Co. And this one is called Wild Pink Beta. And you may have seen this already on my channel because I did compare this to a number of other pink polishes that I had been purchasing over the last few months, one of which was Merkitten by Mooncat. And this definitely ended up being different enough from that polish that I could justify having both in my collection. This is a beautiful bright summer pink that is just jam packed full of this beautiful blue glow. And that glow does have a shift in it to orange and purple. So a really beautiful polish here. This has been one of my favorite combos lately. <laughs> like I mentioned, I did collect quite a few of them from different boxes and releases over the last couple of months. So here is that one in two coats. This is another one where it is still a little bit squishy in two coats, but this is probably how I would end up wearing it. It is such a vibrant, vibrant pink, and you definitely see that gorgeous glow on the nail. I think in this lighting here, you're mainly seeing that as a purple, but it has flashes in it. You can see more blue or more purple depending on the lighting, depending on the angle that you're looking at your nails. So again, with this one, longer nails might need a third coat to reach full opacity, but here it is in two coats with a glossy top coat. So that first one from the Stardust Shimmer Box is Kathleen & Co's Wild Pink Beta. The next one comes from Bees Knees Lacquer, and Bees Knees Lacquer brought us Don't Be Jelly. This is a very squishy purple that is jam-packed full of this larger particled shimmer or maybe even a micro flaky. This is one of the components that I absolutely love to see from this maker. They pick some beautiful ones. Now on camera, you're mainly seeing it as a blue to aqua green, but I think there you can see some of the pink and gold pop up. This has some beautiful shifts to it and it looks amazing on the nail. So here it is in three coats. This is one that definitely maintains a squish factor to it as you can see there. But what I love about this kind of polish is you can use it as a transformative topper over other colors and basically put this sheer purple with this amazing shimmer over whatever color you choose. So if you wanted this to be purple like it is here, I would put it over a purple cream to give you that boost in opacity but the shimmer on this is really, really gorgeous. 
I love the larger particle size and the colors that you're seeing. So here it is in three coats with the glossy top coat. So that one was Bees Knees Lacquers Don't Be Jelly. And next up we have Swamp Gloss and they brought us Sunset with Teeth. And this is another one that has a very sheer base, this time in a very light smoky blue green and the shimmer particles on this have pink to gold to green with some orange in there so here's that one in three coats this one did have a slightly more opaque formula as you can see but on longer nails you're probably still going to see some visible nail line depending on how prominent yours is but i love the smoky color of this i also really love the warmer tones that you're seeing from that larger particle shimmer this is one of those shifts that i adore to see in any kind of polish it is beautiful so there it is in three coats with a glossy top coat so that was Swamp Gloss Sunset with Teeth. Now we're moving on to the Fandom Flaky Box for June, the theme of which I'm pretty sure was Mario Brothers. Bees Knees brought us I'm Now the Most Powerful Turtle in the World. And this one is a very squishy green, much sheerer than I figured it would be based on the bottle, but it is loaded with holographic flakies as well as these iridescent flakies. As you can see, you've got some really big ones there, but you do have a lot of varying sizes in here. So very packed with flakies. Oh my goodness, look at those big ones. Wow. So here it is in three coats with a glossy top coat. It was sheer than I was expecting it to be, but depending on your nail length, it might be okay in three coats. But as you can see, if you've got a pretty prominent nail line, you're probably gonna see it through this polish. I would probably end up wearing this over a green cream, but you definitely get a load of those flakies coming out to play. This is pretty unique to my collection as well. I don't have too many greens in this color family or in this finish. So that one was Bees Knees Lacquers. I am now the most powerful turtle in the world. Next up we have the offering from Night Owl Lacquer for that month and this is You Just Got luigi and this one is a reflective with flakies. So we've got a load of silver reflective glitters and then we've got multi-chrome flakies that shift between nearly every single shade of blue and green. So you're mainly seeing different shades of green at the face but there towards the edge you can see the darker tones of blue and maybe some aqua start to pop up. This one is in a sheer base so here it is in three coats. I would say this gets you mostly opaque but again it's the kind of polish that if you've got a prominent nail line, you're probably going to see at least some of it in certain lighting. But look at that reflective glitter. Absolutely gorgeous, just twinkling away beautifully. I did put one coat of glossy top coat on this and it seems to have glossed it out nicely. But depending on how thick your coats are, it is possible that you might need a glitter smoother on top of it before you put your glossy top coat. There it is in three coats with a glossy top coat. So that one was Night Owl Lacquers, you just got luigi And last but not least from the Fandom Flakies box is Wildflower Lacquers, and this is Not Bad Mustache. And I want to say this is one that I had pulled out to do those pink comparisons when I was comparing things to Merkitten. And here it is just compared to that Kathleen & Co. As you can see, they do have different formulas, and the one from Wildflower Lacquer also has some flakies in it, some hollow flakies slightly different shifts in the shimmer as well. Also the one from Wildflower is more of a creamy formula whereas the Kathleen Co has more of that jelly formula. So Wildflower Lacquer has sort of a dusty lean to that bright pink as well. Like I mentioned you do have a scattering of those holographic flakies as well as that beautiful shifting shimmer on camera and in person it's mainly coming off as a beautiful blue with a hint of purple in the background. So here's that one in two coats. Like I mentioned, this one was nice and opaque for me. I only needed two coats to reach full opacity. Love the shimmer in this. I love the amount of hollow that they used. It's just enough to add a nice twinkle and a little bit of a speckle on the nail. And again, love, love, love the shimmer in a pink base. So there it is with two coats and a glossy top coat. So that last one was Wildflower Lacquer's Not Bad Mustache. So there we have it. That was my little cluster of hauls from various vendors over the last couple of months. Let me know if you purchased any of these down below or which ones were your favorites from the haul. Overall, I was pretty happy with most of these purchases. I especially love the Bees Knees Lacquer. That UP Purple is really, really gorgeous. The birthday polish for Latania is another favorite of mine, as is the thermal that I got from Danny Diana. I will say, usually I do end up with at least one polish from the subscription boxes that isn't necessarily my favorite. Although I will say this month, 
I liked most of them. I mean, both of them had a bright pink that has a beautiful shimmer in it, which of course, you know, I love. I really love the shimmer that we got from the Bees Knees Lacquer and the Swamp Gloss. So I would say this box was the least successful, at least for ones that I really liked. We had two in the green family and green is just not my favorite. I do have families of greens that I really do enjoy, but I would just say these two were probably my least favorite of the box. I did end up canceling that subscription recently just because I need to have a better grasp on what I'm spending. I think it's going to be one of those boxes where I keep an eye out and maybe eventually if I see a box for the month come up that has three polishes that I want, I might go ahead and buy it, but we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on that. In any case, there you have it. That was my haul. If you're new, make sure to hit the little subscription button down below. That way you don't miss out on any of my new videos and I will see you in that next one.